Greetings, this is Lynn Mann presenting to you Screencast-O-Matic. In this four-part series, we'll be focusing in and using the pro version, that is, the pay version of the software. In part one, we'll be discussing the editing tools that are available. And when I can, I'll let you know if it is available just in the pro version or also in the free version. Now that I have my recording completed but not yet published, I'm going to go ahead and do some editing of my video. So as soon as you click done on your recording, you get to this backstage view. And I'm going to open up my editing capabilities and you'll see here are all my tools and I'm going to work with cut out. Let's say this video has no voice uh, that's been pre-recorded. So if I play the video, You'll see that I just kind of wander about and I'm looking at Google Earth and Google Maps and it just so happens I'm looking at different sites around the world and kind of uh, checking them out for a quick video. And somewhere in the video there's a, a moment where I think I'm taking too long of a time to trans from one side of the continent to the other and maybe I've taken too long in the United States versus some other else in the world so I'm going to skip ahead and let's say right about here in the video I either made a mistake or there's too much of a pause so to be able to cut out I need to tell Screencast-O-Matic where do I want the splice to start and where do I want the splice to end? <clears throat> the best way to do this is just to watch the video and see if there's some point in time that you want to stop it. I'm just going to click on pause and it looks like at 2 minutes 50 seconds point 3 let's say I'm going to grab this first little in end cap and I'm going to go up to that point in time. So let's just say 250. I want to get it as close as I can to that marker. And let's say I want to take out about three seconds. So then I grab the end cap marker and I drag that down to where that point in time in between is about three seconds. I can get it pretty close. Looks like 3.1 was the closest of the three seconds. Now if I play it before I cut it, I can view it just to make sure is that indeed where I want to cut out. And if that is the point that I want to cut, I go up to my tools and I say cut out. Okay, that's one slice. Now it skips over that time period. That's three seconds that I cut out. And if I want another cutout, let's say maybe at the four minute marker, again, I'm going to pause the video. I'm going to put my end cap at that period of time, wherever it may be. And let's say I want to chop off this time, oh, I don't know, 10 seconds. For whatever reason, this is what I want to cut out and I'm going to click on cut out. Again, it's only going to cut in between the first mark and the second mark. And I can continuously do this throughout the whole entire video. And if I back up a few seconds and play the video, you'll see that it does skip, uh, jump ahead, I should say. And so it did cut that out. But let's say I did that on uh, and I didn't want to. It was an accident. What I can do is I can go to the last thing in my history and I can select the last thing I did and I can undo it. I cannot remove that first cutout without doing everything on top of it. So if I did five cutouts, I would have to delete number five, four, three, two, all the way back to one. It very simply to, to do. So all I do is click this red X. It puts that cutout back in for the five seconds or the 10 seconds that I removed. And I can cut, I can remove the first cutout as well. There's no redo, there's only an undo. 
and again I'd have to go through every single cutout to get to the point where uh, I made my mistake of cutting out. As you see in the pre-recorded video, you'll see my mouse movements, not only the cursor of the mouse, but that circle around the mouse to get your attention. If I choose for a period of time in my video, either the whole video or a portion of my video, not to see that, I can turn that off. So I'm going to pause my video and from, I'm going to move just like in cutout, I'm going to move my time to one minute we'll call it one minute and I'll move my end time to we'll say around 30 seconds that's about good and I'm going to click on hide mouse now only during this portion of time will it hide my mouse so I'm going to go ahead and move my time ends all the way back to the beginning and start. But I'm going to back up the video slightly to about 45 seconds and play the video. And you'll see, you see the mouse, and then once I get to the one minute marker, the mouse will disappear. The movement of the video will still continue, but the mouse will disappear, and you'll no longer be able to see the mouse. But you'll see somewhat where I'm hovering over because that's the style of video that I did in about 15 more seconds because I only did it for about 30 seconds you'll see the mouse come back again I can do this in numerous places uh, in the video I can designate when you see the mouse when you don't but I have to, I can do this during the editing portion not while I'm recording or I don't have to worry about it when I'm recording I can worry about it when I'm editing the video I should say again here comes the mouse back there's one other thing I want to show you about the hiding of the mouse. I'm going to pause the video and go over here in the history. There's this little toggle to where it's visible or not. Plus, there's a get rid of that change altogether. Just like cutout, if I delete it, that change in editing no longer exists. But the nice thing about this type of editing is if I click on the visibility, go back to the one minute mark, or right before the one minute mark, and play the video. You'll see my mouse. And even after the one minute mark, you see the mouse. It's toggling it off that editing choice without having to delete it. Very nice feature. And then of course, if we didn't want it at all, we could delete it. If you want to add more videos into the one you've already created, you do need to record those other videos. Once you're done recording them, again, you're going to go into your editing. You're going to go to insert more. And first, you want to make sure you have the video played to the point where you want to insert more. That is not where you drag these markers it's where the video has actually played. That's the trick of this. So let's say at the four minute mark, <clears throat> pardon me, I'm just gonna go ahead and step forward just a little bit using my arrow keys. And I can get it pretty precise here. At the four minute mark, I want to insert a video. So I'm gonna click on insert more. I'm going to either do a new recording or an existing recording. I've already chosen one, so I'm going to choose from my existing recordings. And I'm going to do this waterfall. It does take a second to copy in the video. And now, at the four minute mark, I have another video. And you can see on my listed history, I have an inserted video. So let's go back just a few seconds. We'll play our video. And we see Google Earth, and then it pops over to a waterfall. And then once the waterfall is done, it should then go back to my Google Earth video. 
and bingo, I've inserted in a video on top of inside the video I've already done. If I wanted to tack it on to the end, again, I need to go to that place in quote unquote time of my video. So you want to go all the way up to the end, make sure that it's played all the way through, that that green bar is all the way to the end. That's the secret. Click on insert more. Again, I'm going to choose for my existing and I'm just going to take this water video too. It's going to copy it into my Google existing. And then once it's done, it does take a moment or two. Now you can see that the second portion of that video has been connected. Lastly, if I decided that I needed to undo either of those inserts, I do have to go to the last insert and delete that insert to get to the first insert. But if it's the last one, hey, not a problem. I can just click on the last one. The ability to use transitions is a nice way to softly move from either one scene to the next or softly move into your video and out of your video. So the first thing we want to do is I'm going to go ahead and click on insert or pardon me transition. It's going to search for all the periods of points in time uh, that I have a possible transition. One is at the start, one is at the end, and then I have two other videos that I've spliced into this main video. So I can have it before and after those points. So I'm going to go ahead and click on Start Transition. And I don't want it this harsh green, so I can choose any color that's in their palette and say OK. I'm going to have it duration of three seconds. I'm going to add this transition. And I'm just going to click on it. And that's very nice. It slowly goes into it. It takes three seconds for the whole color to go away. If I decide no, that's not what I want to do, I can delete the transition very easily by going into my history and clicking on the X. Go back to my transition. Select my transition, the color. Maybe I want it a little bit darker than that. I'm going to say OK. And this time I'm going to preview it. Yes, that's much better. I like the little bit darker into the map. So I'm going to go ahead and say Add Transition. I'm going to go back to my transitions and this time I'm going to select Before This Waterfall Effect. And I have lots of different ways to select which type of transition I want because it's from a video to a video. I have these different options. I can say a Fade and preview it. fade with color and that takes that gray color with it collapse in and I'm not going to use all of these I'm just kind of seeing that's kind of nice and let's see a slide kind of backwards from how I read so if I was going to do a slide I'd probably do it to how I read versus the opposite of how I read and once I find the transition that I want, I can say start tra right, Add Transition. Once I have those transitions in the video, I can view it. And you see the transition goes fairly smoothly. It took three seconds. I can change that if I wanted. And likewise, if I did not want the transition, that last transition, I could delete it. Again, that his pardon me, that history list only allows me to delete the last one in that sequence. If I wanted that start transition, I no longer wanted it. Uh, I can't delete it straight right. I could select it and view it, but I can't just go directly to it and delete it because something's above it. So I'd have to delete the one above, then go down to the next one. And those are nice transitions.
Now occasionally our video might be a little bit long and I want to take out some of the video or I want to chop down this video to a smaller video. So what I can do is, again, I'm going to move my markers, but this time I'm going to pause it and I'm going to move it to, let's say, the 48, 42nd marker and the 450, about five minute marker. And this time I want to trim everything outside of this area. So instead of the full length of time, and my full length of time, I'm just spreading out my markers so I can see exactly the original length of this video is six minutes, 24 seconds. So let's say I don't want six minutes. And I want Let's say I just want to start at about a minute in. I can either truncate the first portion or the outside portion or both. So as long as I move these markers in towards the middle, everything else is going to be truncated. So then I'm just going to go up and I'm going to say trim around. And now my video is only four minutes and 52 seconds long. If that was a mistake, I can always go back and undo it. And you'll notice that the last transition that I added on my video is now crossed out because it was after that point in time. So if I need another transition at the very end, I need to put one there. So I'm going to go back to my transitions. It's searching for all my placements of transitions. And that whole last bit was a little bit cut off so I'm going to just say insert before this guy again I can choose to add that transition Oop, that wasn't the one I wanted so I'm just going to delete it go back to transition and my end transition I want to make sure that that's in there and now it's back in there uh, my start transition was the one that got truncated so I'm going to put in and let's see, there we go. Uh, in transition, nope, if I want, if I get into this area, I can just go back. I'm going to go ahead and say done with all of my changes. So I have an in transition, a slide to the right, I did some inserts, I hid my mouse, and I also trimmed my video. And once I say done, that's done with editing and now I can go to the next step which would be publishing. If you enjoyed this video, here are a few others in the Screencast-O-Matic series. You can find these on the CA Community College's YouTube channel. Until then, this is Lynn Mann. Be seeing you.